courage, fortitude, wisdom, prudentia, temperance, temperantia, justice, justitia. Applying ancient philosophy to modern life. This is the Sunday Stoic. Episode eight of the Sunday Stoic. I'm Steve. And today we're going to tackle a big issue, death. The Stoics had a lot to say about death. We are only going to look at three readings today. There's a lot more to be done if you want to fully understand their view of this subject. But I've picked three readings that have different perspectives on this, different ways of viewing death and of using your knowledge of death to live a good life. The Stoics say that you really must conquer your fear of death before you can live a virtuous life. You can't live a good life if you're scared of things all the time. And if you can conquer your fear of death, then nothing else in life is going to scare you. And you can't live a good life if you're constantly worrying about the future, what's going to happen. I'm going to die, I will have to worry about it. No, nope, it's a given, it's going to happen, it's out of your control. It's, it's an indifferent. Maybe you could say it's an indifferent you wish wouldn't happen, but it's going to happen. So be indifferent to it rather than focusing on how you wish it wouldn't happen. It's going to happen. Accept it. We're going to hear from Epictetus, from Marcus Aurelius, and Seneca. And our reading from Seneca today is by Steve in Canada. And... Uh, Steve is a listener. He was very kind, wrote in a nice email about how he and his wife enjoy the podcast. So a big shout out to Steve. Hi, Steve. An awesome first name, by the way. And uh, Steve is also a musician, and his website is www.stevecaston.ca. That's Steve, C-A-S-T-O-N, dot C-A. Check out his stuff. All right, so let's hear what the Stoics have to say about death. The Thoughts of Marcus Aurelius, Chapter 6, Verse 24. Alexander the Macedonian and his horse groomer, by death, were brought to the same state. For either they were received among the same seminal principles of the universe, or they were alike dispersed among the atoms. The Discourses of Epictetus, Book 2. Chapter 1. What is death? A tragic mask. Turn it and examine it. See that it does not bite. The poor body must be separated from the spirit, either now or later, as it was separated from it before. Why, then, are you troubled if it be separated now? For, if it is not separated now, it will be separated afterward. Why? that the period of the universe may be completed, for it has the need of the present, and of the future, and of the past. What is pain? A mask. Turn it and examine it. The poor flesh is moved roughly, then, on the contrary, smoothly. If this does not satisfy you, the door is open. If it does, bear it. For the door ought to be open for all occasions, and so we have no trouble. Moral Letters to Lucilius by Seneca Chapter 54 On Asthma and Death Verse 4 What? I say to myself, does death so often test me? Let it do so. I myself have for a long time tested death. When, you ask? Before I was born. Death is non-existence, and I know already what that means. What was before me will happen again after me. If there is any suffering in this state, there must have been such suffering also in the past, before we entered the light of day. As a matter of fact, however, we felt no discomfort then. Death is one of those big ones that people are afraid of deeply. Whether they be religious or not, death scares people. And the Stoics thought that in order to live a virtuous life, you have to overcome this fear. It's foolish to fear things that are inevitable. You must embrace them, accept them, 
conquer the conqueror, as the Stoics like to say. If you can conquer the conqueror, meaning give death no power over you, it causes you no fear, then you can apply that same fearlessness to every situation in life. If you're not afraid of death, you're not afraid of anything. And you can live bravely every day, courageously, virtuously. Our first reading is from Marcus Aurelius. And Marcus Aurelius often reminds himself of his upcoming and inevitable death. And he uses that as a tool to be a better person. So you can use death, your knowledge of death, to drive you to be more virtuous. He says that Alexander the Great and the guy that groomed his horses were both made equal by death. So death is the great equalizer. It doesn't matter how fancy you are. So Marcus Aurelius was emperor of Rome, a god according to some people, right? And he could have had that, let that go right to his head, and a lot of emperors did. But he's telling himself, remember, one of the greatest conquerors of all time, and the guy whose horses, or who, who groomed his horses, a guy who we don't even know his name, whoever groomed his horses, they are equal in death. And then he adds another, another uh, statement, which I find interesting. He says, either they joined the universe or they were dispersed into atoms. The Stoics had a view of the universe in which there were gods, such as Zeus, um, and and fates that, that maybe kind of controlled your destiny. You your destiny was, was was already laid out when you were born. And we may update those views in modern Stoicism, of course, but at the time they were that was their view and and when you died you joined the logos the logos was sort of the i guess you could just say the the universe the the logic of the universe but also the epicureans put forth this idea they didn't necessarily invent it but they were uh, the torchbearers for the idea that everything was made up of of atoms they didn't know what atoms were in the modern sense, but everything was made up of tiny particles. And they didn't really buy into this life after death thing. So the Stoics were kind of on the fence about it. Some of them talk about it as if, of course, you live after death. Some say you kind of just get dispersed into the universe and others weren't so sure. So Marcus Aurelius appears to be uncertain here. He says either you join the universe or you're dispersed into atoms and you're dead. Either way, you're made equal with every other human being that has ever lived. And either one doesn't sound terribly unpleasant. You join the universe, you're dispersed into atoms, and if you want to think about it as a scientist, you do sort of, I mean, first of all, you're never apart from the universe, but you do go back to that from whence you came, dust to dust. The next reading by Epictetus is a very interesting one as well. We can see a different perspective here, a different view of death. He says that just like children are afraid of masks, adults are afraid of things like death and pain, but they are nothing more than masks. They are perceptions, they are things we will feel, and they are unpreferred indifference, let's say, dispreferred, but you can handle it. You're a virtuous person, you can take it. So death is a mask. It's not really anything to be afraid of. As the Epicureans say, where you are, death is not, and where death is, you are not. So there's nothing there to be afraid of. And, as, as, as uh, you know, uh, uh, Marcus Aurelius sort of alluded to, it's inevitable. Everyone, everyone is going to experience death, including you. And it might be today. You might not get through this sentence, or you might live another hundred years, but it's going to happen. So don't dread it. It's going to happen. Why would you want to waste your life in fear? Pain also is a mask. It's not something you want, 
but it's something that will happen and it's not as scary as it seems the anticipation is far worse than the than the event itself and here's another very interesting thing that some people will find quite unsettling or controversial he says if the pain is too much if pain is too much if things are happening that are too much the door is always open what does that mean the door is open he means the exit you can always take your own life if you can't bear life anymore now this is not to say oh well I'm depressed I'm gonna take my own life no you would want to go to a doctor for that sort of thing right but if you're ridden with cancer or you're you're wounded in combat or even if life is unbearable in that you know you're about to be captured tortured and executed then the Stoics would say well the door is open it is your option you always your entire life have this option and there's a lot written about this by Seneca as well the door is open this is a very empowering thing a very powerful message not to say you take it lightly not by any stretch of the imagination but if you know first of all death is not to be feared and that if anything in life becomes so unbearable that you can't bear to think about it you can always leave whenever you want that means you have nothing to fear he says the door is always open so there's nothing to worry about basically is what he says there's no reason to fear at all in life if things become so bad just check out you're done but be reminded that that the stoics advocated also that if you are still useful if you are still doing good things in this world then 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 suicide would be a dishonorable thing to do not an honorable thing this is what you do when there's not really any other options you're about to die anyway uh, and you'd prefer just to uh, have it happen at your own hand quickly swiftly and be done with it so something to think about there it doesn't really fit in with a lot of our modern morality uh, although in some states in the US now you have more options for euthanasia but not another so something to think about philosophy is about thinking and one thing that I highly advocate is you don't dogmatically accept things just because some philosopher said them look at what they say take the stuff that you think is is realistic or that fits the modern era update what they said to fit the modern era and maybe even take things from other philosophies as Seneca says the truth belongs to no man if you find something an Epicurean said that really you think is powerful and would help you live a better life incorporate that into your own philosophy be an eclectic philosopher if you will the last reading is by Seneca I think Seneca is my favorite Stoic uh, so far. Uh, Marcus Aurelius is great to read these little snippets, like little words of wisdom, little pearls of wisdom. I like him for that, and and it's a quick and easy read if you want to check out uh, his his book there. Um, Epictetus, maybe a little preachy, um, more of a religious fanatic in a way, and and but I, I understand why he was a slave and lived a hardcore life and then became a hardcore philosopher Seneca unlike me was uh, well off wealthy a wealthy guy uh, but uh, he has a very nice easy to read writing style and he had he actually wrote his own things uh, Epictetus never wrote his own uh, books as far as we know all of his uh, writings are really uh, lecture notes taken by his students uh, Seneca uh, pretty interesting guy uh, a bit controversial in the realm of Stoics because he may not have always behaved as stoically as he could have, but he admits this. He says, I am not a Stoic sage, I make mistakes. So what he says here is, I think, the most powerful thing I've ever uh, heard when it comes to the fear of death. Uh, I've actually heard this repeated in modern times uh, by Penn Jillette, the uh, magician, uh, who also is a bit of a you could argue he's a bit of a philosopher uh, kind of a interesting guy he says don't fear death he doesn't fear death because he already knows what it's like so do you you know what death is like you were dead once think of it this way 
Let's say you were born in 1980. 